So the first thing I'm gonna go through today is my pace line. That's something I've been looking forward to for ages, to be honest. What well, for me, paste, it's a weird one. I like using it as a, it's a very quick method to catch fish on. So you can use it as a non-selective method to start with, which I think it, it could be similar to that in today's case, but it's also very selective for when them big fish turn up, simply because of the versatility that you can uh, change about the size of your hook baits. I mean, there's no reason I can't put a, a six mil size piece on, or I could even go with a 26 mil size piece on. You know what I mean, it's that um, versatile. I, I can put whatever I want on to select the type of fish I want to catch. But the so first I want to go through is the bait that I'm going to use in this session. I'm going to talk about what I ought to do in, in different circumstances as well. So for today, I'd say I'm going to catch F1 skimmers and big carp. So I want to begin with a, a non-selective um, a bait that can keep everything in my peg sort of thing. Very similar to ground bait. So today I'm going to go with micro pellets, a little bit of emp and my paste mix. They're going to be my three baits that I feed to catch a bit of everything to begin with. By choosing those baits, what I'm really after is by having little tiny baits, they're going to break down really quickly. I'm going to have a big area of feed that the fish are grubbing about, but they're still going to home in on my hook bait really, really quickly because I've got a nice big lump of paste. So I've got my nice soft micro pellets that I've softened, same as I would for whether I'm fishing a feeder, whether I'm feeding them on a pole with expanders, whatever. They're the same, they're just nice and soft, and a tin of them straight out the bag. That's just, they're ready to feed with a bit of water on. My paste. So I've mixed that. In this case, I've just mixed some commercial carp green, which is my preferred bag and grammar that I use for paste. It, it's a, a plain pellet-based mix with some added boilies to it, which means that with it being a, a normal uh, coarse pellet mix, the ground out coarse pellets, there's very little activity in it, as long as I've added lots and lots of water to the mix to kill all the, all the activity and all the particles. So what I've actually done is I've put a small amount of water in the tub, and then I add my mix straight out the bag, straight to that water to make sure every single particle is completely soaked yeah and by completely soaking it putting it to the side it'll look as if it's spoiled it'll look like a, a a thick soup for a period but if you leave it to the side very quickly it'll all soak up that water all, all the bread and all the pellets whatever else and you end up with a lovely tacky paste yeah you'll actually find that it may be a little bit too stiff so you can add a little bit more to do it oh he's got one <laughs> you add a bit more water to it and get it to how you want it on the day yeah, there's no right and wrong for the consistency of paste. It all depends how quick you get in bites, what fish you're eating it, so it strikes through your hook easy, and also the size of paste you want to get out there. So there's no way of getting really soft lumps of paste uh, a long distance without the use of a couple of things. So sometimes you might want a little bit of a stiffer one. A little sneaky tip that I use to actually, to help soften my paste, but not um, slow the breakdown of it by adding more water, is I actually add a little bit of oil to it. Yeah, by adding oil instead of water to a paste that's uh, already nearly there, I get the, the added um, softness in my paste, but it doesn't, it slows the breakdown a little bit because it's oil. It actually makes the paste a little bit waterproof. So it makes it go a little bit, or stay on the hook a little bit longer, which helps me out. So bait wise, we're done. I've actually feed in, I've already fed a little pot. I've been a bit sneaky and put a pot in there. I've literally just a pinch of each. Yeah, a pinch of pellets, a pinch of uh, hemp, and a little few little tasters in my paste. Just a bit of crumbled up ground bait. I've already fed that into my bag. I'll talk about feeding a bit more when we're fishing it. Rig-wise, so everything's got to be fairly simple, but at the same time, they've got to do the right things. What are you bringing it to show us, are you? Right, you just cut in. I do apologise, people. But I've just had a great big wobble. This is what we're here for. Look at this bad boy, Jay. <laughs> I've never caught one that big. <laughs> What's that? Five pound? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and a bit. Carry on, I'll show you how we did it in a bit. <laughs> right, so I'm back on my rigs. So I, I suppose with the, the myth with paste things is everything's really complicated and you've got to have the right sorts of rigs for however you're fishing paste. In reality, if you think about the right components of your rig, it's as simple as it can possibly get. Yeah, your feeding's really easy, you just put a lump of bait on the bottom. Your floats, all that matters is that they're nice and durable because you're going to fish heavy gear for big fish, but also they're nice and long with long bristles. They're the only components you need for your paste floats. There I've got a selection of all sorts of things that I'd use for big round-bodied ones that I'm fishing a great big deep water lake, something like the specimen lake here at Larford, or nice little slim ones that offer very little resistance to the fish and they can hold the weight of your pace really nice or hold against the weight of your pace really nice and easy. But as long as you've got a nice big long float with a nice long bristle, that's the most important thing with your pace, that your float's doing the right job. The last thing you want to use is little tiny short stubby floats 
that make it very, very difficult to get things right that you'll see what I mean in a minute uh, when I plumb things up. So in this case, uh, I've got a 4 tens float, a nice little light float. Yeah, the, the weight of your float um, isn't too important in terms of stability. Yeah, I want something that's relevant to the depth that I'm fishing in. So in this case, I've got three foot. So I want a little bit of weight down the bottom end to help it keep it a little bit still. But really, I'm going to have a great big lump of paste on. So that's going to work as me me anchorage if you like me plummet so the size of float isn't too important you just want to suit it loosely to the depth of water that you've got don't go too heavy if it's um, not too deep and i've literally got that shotted with a bulk just above my hook length just a nice little spread bulk right on top of my hook length because again my, my shotting's doing nothing other than shotting my float in a pace case there's no fall through the water it's simply my bait is presented nice and tight right on the bottom and i'm sitting and waiting for a bite yeah Last of all, I've got my hook length and I've got a great big hook. This is the one time I can use a great big hook. I've borrowed these off Andy. I've just got myself a pack of size 12s because I can use a nice great big hook that allows the paste to, um, to hold on as I ship out. I mean, by having a great big wide great big hook, it actually supports my paste as I ship out. I can drop it in without my hook ripping through my paste and it falling off too quickly. So components of the rig done. So in today's case, I've gone quite heavy. I've gone with 019 to 017. And I've got our green stuff, our 10-ish sort of rate of the lazzy, just because we're going to catch some big fish. But the main thing I want to talk about is me plumbing up. Yeah, so obviously I've, I've already got this plumbed up to how I want it, but it's vital with your paste that you're plumbing up to remain in contact with your float. So you can see there, I've plumbed up, excuse me, right to the middle of my body of my float. Yeah, which is going to give me a lovely tight line. Yeah, my rig's never going to be straight, but what it allows me to do is plonk my paste in, pull my float down the peg a little bit. So you can see me doing that. And by actually having, using, say my plummet in this case, but you can see that there's dead depth. I can actually pull down on my hook bait and I can see that my paste still on. So you can see it's anchoring there. You can see it's actually pulling down. If I go ultimately all the way down, I can pull my float under because it's got a nice heavy, um, heavy anchorage point on the bottom. So in this case, it's my plummet, but my paste is going to do exactly the same thing it means that I'm in contact with my bait at all times so I can see what's going on. That is the number one thing to make sure you're doing when you're fishing paste is that you are always in contact with your bait. Yeah, and then obviously the windier it is and the more your floats pull in, the more you increase the, um, the over depth, I mean the line that you give it to lay on the bottom or to, to create that bow in your line sort of thing. There's no good plumbing to, to really dot it down here somewhere because straight away, as soon as my, the wind blows that float, it's going to push it under the water. So I'm not going to see what's going on. So the middle of my body in this case, that's going to allow me to be nice and accurate and maintain a tight line to my float without creating too much uh, buoyancy in my float to rip my hook out of the paste. So it keeps my paste on the hook at the same time, but doesn't allow my paste to come off too quick because there's too much pressure on that float blowing out my peg to make things move out the way. So... So that's me peg plumbed up, all nice and sensible. So a little point that I didn't mention then is that with these floats, they're quite specific in that, yes, they've got a big long antenna on them, but it's also, these floats, these are from years and years ago, they used to use them back at Cudmore. They've actually got a solid tapered bristle, which what it allows me to do is when I'm pulling back on my paste, that there's very, very res little resistance in the bristle, there's very little buoyancy. So I can show a massive amount of bristle but the fish doesn't feel anything when it's pulling the float down. Yeah, because it's a solid uh, tapered bristle. It's really, really, really sensitive. So I see a lot more bites because of that. that that's a bit, bit of a specialist thing, but still a little extra tip that keeps things working. So I've got my bait fed. What I'm going to do, I'm not a fan of putting pots on my pole or anything like that. I just like to ship it out there. I don't tend to fish pace too long. I like to keep within six, seven meters of the bank where, where them big fish live. Um, and I like to ship my paste out. I don't like putting it in pots. It's, it's another thing to go wrong in my eyes and makes things a little bit fiddly. Right, so on to a little bit of fishing. And first thing that people struggle with a little bit is actually hooking the paste. Yeah, for me, again, I find things dead simple. Firstly, I want to choose the size of bait for the fish I'm going to catch. Yeah, so to begin with, I don't want to go too selective because I don't know what's there. And to start with, I just want to catch a few fish. So I'm going to go with eight mil pellet sort of size. So I'm going to get myself a nice little ball of paste size of an 8mm pellet, I'm just going to compress it a little bit with my thumb. Once he's compressed, I'm just going to stick my hook in him, fold the, the paste back over the top of the hook, and then I'm going to compress my paste around the top of the hook, around the, the, the spade end of the hook, if you like, 
And what that does, it creates a little tiny pyramid for me with all the compression around the top, which helps keep my, my hook right, uh, my paste on the hook. So it's all pressed around the top of the hook and the rest of the hook's just supporting in the paste. And because it's narrow at the top of my, my uh, lump of paste, it allows my hook to rip through it a bit easier. So when I strike, my hook doesn't get caught up in that paste. Right, so I've got my bait on. You can see I've got my pole ready to ship together as well. I don't like to put my bait on, leave it dangling while I ship my pole up, while I connect my pole up. So in this case, once the little family of ducks go, I've got my paste dangling, my pole ready together, so I can just ship straight out. And hopefully that's not going to create too much bouncing to make that paste come off. So I'm not going to mess about with pole, little pole cops and things like that. So before I lay my rig in, today the, the water's moving from left to right. So what I want to do, just to speed things up a little bit, is that I'm going to put my paste into the left and my float just six inches down my peg. And what that's going to do, because the water's already moving that way, it's going to create that angle straight away for me. So you can see when my float's gone in, if I just pull on it slightly with my back shot, I create a tilted float so I know that I'm really tight to my hook bait. Yeah, I can actually pull on that a little bit and make it go lower if I want, which shows me that my paste is still on the hook. If I keep pulling on that, does that go a bit lower? Yeah, so I've got a nice tight line to my paste and a lovely bite. To say that there is no better bait than paste for being able to keep a tight line to your hook bait, which is perfect for showing up everything that's going on in your peg. Not only does it show me the bite's a lot clearer because I've got a tight line, it also shows me whether there's fish present. Like then it was moving about a little bit, letting me know that there was a few fish in my swim. I've got a few bubbles as well, which is giving things away. But I knew something was gonna happen. I knew I was gonna get a bite because I was getting a few little dips. One thing I didn't mention that I definitely should have before is that when I plumbed up, I also have a little tiny fine tuner under my float, which is what I do with pretty much all my rigs. But in the case of fishing paste, this is, I really do use it a lot because by referring to my fine tuner, which has been put just under my float when I've plumbed up, what I can do is in that case, I felt like I couldn't tighten up to my paste quite as much as I wanted to. So I can just move my fine tuner down an inch. I'm gonna move my float down a little bit as well. And now I can pull a little bit tighter. I've not got quite as much slack line in my rig. And same again before I go out, put my pole together. And say, so repeat the same. So I fed my peg once when I first went in with it, just literally a pinch of each, pinch of micros, pinch of hemp, and a few, um, a few little lumps of paste with what I'm feeding. And now I genuinely won't feed it again until I need to. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely method that I can put my bait in and set my sort of trap, put my put my bait on a table if you like, and I can just fish it out. Yeah, if I'm catching the right fish to begin with, then I can just keep on with that. When the fish has disappeared, I can put another pot in and, and fish it out again. If I wasn't catching the right fish, however, if I catch small fish and I don't bring any new fish into my peg or any of the right big fish, then I might need to bring noise into it, which in that case, my bait options might change a little bit. This is what I was mentioning before about some very good paste anglers that I know, and they go down the they're making a massive amount of noise route with feeding corn and six mil pellets and a lot of them as well to drag those big fish into your peg, which is, it's there, do you know what I mean? That's, that's an option if you need to do that, if there's too many small fish or if nothing's happening. But for me, playing safe to begin with is always the best way to go. I mean, by playing nice and safe now, I can catch a few fish, I can see what's happening before I make my move and potentially fill it in with big positive baits that once I go down that route of throwing a load of corn or a load of pellets in, there's no coming back. But so for, for the meantime, we'll see how things go. I'm gonna plod on with this. And hopefully see how we go. So same again, always put my bait into the left, float into the right. And this time it should sink. See how it's sitting a little bit lower because I took that half inch off. So now I'm a lot tighter, a lot quicker. Just with, it's probably with the wind dying a little bit from when I had a quick go before. Just now that the water's not moving quite as fast to my right. There we go, another indication, yeah. See the lovely, nice, positive bite. As long as I strike at the right ones, I shouldn't miss too many. And we shouldn't foul up too many fish as well. So there's a littlest F1 in Larford Lakes. But say I'm happy with that. It's still only really early. We're still only about half 10 in the morning. So I can't expect to catch the big fish instantly. So by fishing in this way, so I'm making the most, I'm going to put a few fish in my peg, a few fish in the net, before then big lads start feeding. And then once they do, I can swap my feed, I can swap the size of hook bait 
to target just them. So which is something you can't do with really with any other bait. There's no way of tripling your size of hook bait and still being able to use the same rig with any other bait other than paste. So the only other thing that's worth really mentioning with this is the consistency of my paste. So at the beginning of the session now, the fish are feeding quite freely. There's plenty of fish present. Lots of fish present, in fact, but lots of small fish. And at the moment, I'm hooking all my bites. I don't know if this is in the mouth or not. Yeah, I'm hooking everything. If it comes to a point when I start missing a lot of bites, which again, happens a lot with paste fishing, then I can play about with the consistency of my paste. It's worth having, keeping a little pile to one side of the, the container that you keep a bit stiffer. Over the other side, I might have it a little bit softer. And I can play about, see what's right for the species that I'm catching. And say whether I'm missing bites or not. So we've not come to that point in the session yet where I need to play about. So we're catching nice small fish like these. They're a little bit less fussy than the big fish are. So I'm going to plod along with this for a while. And hopefully some of them big ones are going to show themselves instead of all being in Andy's peg. Right, well I've had 20 minutes fishing on that. And to be honest, <laughs> these little fish are doing me head in. There's millions of them. So what I'm going to do, I've definitely seen a few carp coming into my peg. They're definitely having a little look. But there's so many small fish there, it's been difficult to catch them with the smaller baits. So what I'm going to do is whiz my oil out, put a tiny little bit on my paste and whiz them in. Because what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is be a little bit more selective. I'm going to put a bigger piece on and hopefully by adding that little bit of oil, I'm going to slow down the breakdown quite a bit of the paste. So I can put a big lump on now and it'll last a little bit longer and hopefully withstand any of them little fish pecking away at it just for a, a little while. So I'm going to pick a, a good, you know what I mean, a really decent bit off this time. Probably the same as an 11 or even a 13 mil pellet. So it's a great big lump of paste. Some rubbish on my rig. Now with that little bit of oil in, what I'm hoping is that it breaks down a little bit slower and gives them the bigger fish a chance to have it. Let's get that on my rollers. There's definitely, I'm sure there's one there. That now, if there's a swirl there, maybe. We shall have a look. Same again. Put me paste in. Hold that. I'm actually holding back on it now because the wind's really got up. So I can actually hold my hold my pole to the left of my float and the wind's actually doing the job of tightening my rig up for me. So I'm still getting lots of little knocks and knocks and knocks. That's a proper gone. So see whether they're big fish or not, or just little ones that can't manage the paste. I'm not sure, but so I'm just gonna have to put up with missing a few bites for a little bit. But hopefully it'll pay off with a, a much bigger fish. So we'll see. See, I've still not refed the peg. I've left it as it was. There's plenty of fish present in the swim, so I think refeeding it, it could bring some carp in, but I honestly feel it'll just bring a lot more of these small F1s and skimmers in. So I'm sort of letting it calm down, and I'm just letting me paste, feed me peg sort of thing. So every time I miss a bite like that, here we go. Every time I miss a bite, flipping it. It's topping it up. So I don't know whether that was in the mouth or not then. That was definitely, a, that was my first bigger fish that we hooked. So I don't know if that was in the mouth, but it just shows just by messing about, doubling the size of my hook bait, all of a sudden I'm not catching a little one every single chuck like I was doing. And when the time of day's right, when them bigger ones are starting to feed, another big one just topped out there. I mean, I, I can be selective and I can catch some proper fish. A lot of little fish, this is having me flipping mad. So I'm just going to have to wade through them. I think eventually, once it gets a little bit later this afternoon, I think them big fish will just get rid of these little fish out the swim. That's the only reason I think that we've got a peg full of small fish is that the big fish aren't really feeding at this time of day just yet. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to stick with this, these great big pieces for for the next 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to put, we're missing a load of bites. It's just part of it. 
just because my bait's too big for the fish that are trying to eat it. But hopefully, if I can catch a couple of great big fish as a result, it'll make it worthwhile. See, you can see the straight on that, knocking it all over the place, see? So many fish down here. And again, that's straight back to them. Little piranha F1s, which are lovely fish, but not what I want to catch. So. We'll keep going in a minute. So the only other option that I've got is swapping my feed altogether. You know, what I mentioned before about a load of sweet corn potentially as my loose feed. That's an option. I might swap to that just to get rid of those little fish or possibly some big pellets, some six or eight mil hard pellets, make a load of noise with them and hopefully attract some bigger fish in if I need to. But as I say, I want to do that at the right time. I don't want to do that just because just because I'm getting frustrated with little fish. Yeah, I have to do it when the big fish want to feed. So as soon as I start seeing regular signs that big fish are coming short, then it might be time to swap my feeding altogether just to completely stop these little fish from feeding. So as you can see at the moment, just by how my float's behaving, there's a lot of them little F1s and skimmers present in my peg. See, see another swirl on the surface then. I don't know whether that was a, a bigger one. So I'm probably fishing in a little bit too deep water there to actually see any fish that are in my swim. Any, any swirls or anything like that, it's a little bit too deep for that. So the only way I can understand what's going on in my peg is by actually catching what's there and seeing what I'm catching. What type of fish I'm catching. Right, well eventually, after about three weeks, I've managed to hook a big boy. So I say, I just, it's just gone quiet a little bit and all of a sudden I had a proper bite and we got a proper one. So I think, it's, like I said before, it was just time of day, I think, that they're not quite coming in just yet. They so nearly had me as well. It felt like there was a bit of a snag or something. It's pinged me float up the line, but... Uh, being nice and patient, like I say, it's still, it's not even dinner time yet. And to start catching these big lads on paste. So there's pretty much no other bait that you'd get that instant response off these big fish, other than fishing maybe shallow. So there's another one right here right now looking at me. They're the ones we wanted. Take me time with him, with him being a big lad. I've got proper kit on. If I wanted, I could pull its brains out and try and get it in a bit quicker, but so what's the point? This, this is probably six to seven pounds, which is probably about 15 minutes fishing with the, the size of fish I'm getting. I'm going to be in a little bit slower. Hopefully, we'll get him in. Oh, he's a lovely one. Yeah, with it being so shallow here, so I've got no water whatsoever right underneath my pole here. So the fish are very, very reluctant to come into this shallow water. This is where my big long neck comes in really handy. Because often you find that they pop out, pop up just a little bit further out. So this just gives me the chance to get under them if I don't miss it. And have him. Proper whiz me floats off me mark, any. He? He's a proper, proper paste muncher. <laughs> 